Hey everybody, we are going to see an episode out of our Mixing and Mastering Masterclass. Here you can see the curriculum and we are right in the middle of it. Wait here, compression of drums. Here you can see the full curriculum and yeah, actually let's start. We're going to be thinking about compressors right now. We're going to be compressing the drum bus to get the drum bus to sound together. If you have the drum bus to sound together, so they share the same harmonics, they share the same reverb, that kind of stuff, then you get this together type of sound. And the first thing we're going to do is do some uh, drum bus compression. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also root some more, you know, things later into the drum bus. But for now, let's just root this these drums into the drum bus. If you forgot how to make a drum bus, it's just Command T, rename a drum bus, click on In, and then send your drums into the drum bus, buff. Okay, and then this changes to orange, and now you have sound coming through there. Now with a, with a compressor, we have different types of compressors. Um, we have slow compression, and I'm using, I'm going to use waves so that you can see the types of compressors with a little story behind it. So if we have a CLA-2A, for instance, um, which is a opto compressor, and opto works on light. These compressors are brilliant because they have a slow attack time and a slow release time. Now, slow attack time, slow release time. Um, you would normally use this for a smooth leveling of vocals or lead sounds. We're going to use this, but I just want to kind of show you this anyway. So that's what the opto compressor does. Let's just have a listen to what it does. Let's compress the living bananas out of it. It only has one button. So let's just put it down all the way. And now you can see what the problem is. The release is so slow that it doesn't actually come back to zero anymore. So we can't use this compressor. Although it might be nice, we can't use it because it's more for leads and harmonic sounds. So forget about it, but remember this. Opto compressor. Put it on something with leads, harmonics. It's going to work. It's going to be nice. Uh, you also have the CLA-3A, which is a little bit faster. Again, we can have a look. See? It comes back. Still, it doesn't come back to zero. So... You know, we can't really compress the snot out of it. And I do kind of want to do that so I can show you guys parallel compression or New York compression or whatever you want to call it. Um, so a CLA-3A. So these are opto compressors, but let's move on. We can also move into the field of, um, hmm, which one shall we do first? VCA compressor. Shall we do that? No, 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 no. Let, no let's do variable mu. So tube compression. Let's do that one. So if we get a 670, um, so Puick Child 670, which is actually supposed to be a Fairchild 670. These things go for like 50,000 euros and they're huge. I used to work in a studio that had one of these and it was an absolute beast to work with, but absolutely annoying as well. I was always the first one in the studio and at seven o'clock in the morning, I would turn it on so that at nine o'clock we could actually work with it and the tubes need to be replaced. So this will run you into the ground if you don't have enough clients. But regardless of that, it's very simple again. Uh, Remember this CLA 3A and 2A had one knob called peak reduction. Boom, you know, Bob's your uncle. This has one more knob. You have input gain, threshold level, and um, the time. This is the attack time and release time, which is the fastest. Slower, 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 slower. And then the release time is dependent on the incoming signal, but the attack time is the same. Okay, just remember that. You can also do right and left, but for now, just use it like this. Just let it do its job. And its job is to round drums and to hold levels, but to also squish together sound. Another thing this thing does is add warmth to it. So if you need add and lock warmth, that's the this is the one to go for. Make sure you do not click on this. You don't need added noise and whatever you do, you don't need presets, just set it right. So let's just see what it does. Let's compress the living snot out of it. Now you can hear what it does, right?
Obviously, you would never use it like this, but... So it's really nice if you don't know what you're doing to just put thresholds all the way, smack it as hard as you can, so dial it all the way up to 10 and then you can hear what it's doing. So as you can hear it's not making the whole thing really attacky, it's just kind of making it pump a little bit. I just want to have a listen myself to see if I like it, so you're going to have some feedback but I just want to see for a second. It's adding quite a lot of distortion in the uh, in the low end, so I'm not sure if I like it just yet. But we might use this on a two bus compression, um, two bus being on the master. Okay, but right now I'm not really sure if I like it yet. Now one step up from uh, slow attack time. So these are really slow attack time, a little bit faster attack time, a little bit faster attack time. Next one we have is VCA compressor, and in VCA land you have a lot. So you have compressors in every major DAW is based on VCA compressors. Um, and what VCA compressors are really good at is making the snap snap. So it doesn't really do any low end well. It just makes things snap together. So a famous one is the DBX. This is my favorite one and I use it literally all the time. And um, let's just collapse it for a second. We have it right there and it's literally my favorite little piece. You have a threshold again, you have a compression, and that's it. I like simple as bananas, but what we can do now is smack it so it goes back, back, back. Okay, so have a listen to what it does. So it makes the whole track breathe in one go. It's obviously too much, you know, but now you at least know what it does. And the way I use this thing, super easy, you have below and above threshold there. You just use these little lights and if it starts like bouncing with the light, you're always pretty much good. It's nice to compress it a little bit too much, but I'm just gonna set it a little bit nice. You're gonna have a little bit of feedback, but let me just do my thing, all right? Okay, so with this compressor, the reason I like it is because it has a mix knob. The real compressor doesn't have a mix knob like that, but you can mix in, so you can, compress it a little bit too much and then mix it back out um, so that it's not full uh, strength like that. Before and after. So it's clean. It makes it knock like it's like puff right in your like rib cage. You know, it's quite nice. And um, yeah, it's not as dirty as this. Uh, let's just make sure that that's down a little bit. So it's cleaner and it's nice. Another um, SSL compressor, uh, not <laughs> another compressor which is used a lot is the SSL compressor. And this is from a board. Uh, I worked on that as well, which was nice. Uh, but let's just see what this does. This has more buttons. So it's a little bit more scary to use. But when you use buttons, just smack the shit out of it because then you'll know what you're doing. So let's just put the zero for makeup gain so it doesn't automatically sound better. Better meaning louder. And let's make the attack time pretty fast. And Or we can put it on auto. Now it also release time. Let's leave the attack time there. Let's put the threshold. So now listen to it. Listen to the attack of it. So if I keep it down here and I put the attack faster. Actually, 
actually quite nice. It's actually quite nice. Okay. So that once you've said it, so you think it sounds nice, I know it sounds terrible, put the threshold back. And once you've set a couple of threshold, a couple of compressors that you kind of think you like or not, and it's just a little bit too much, let me just have a shootout. I like this. I like the SSL more. I never thought I would like the SSL more. Normally I don't like the SSL. Wow, wouldn't you know. Anyway, you have one more compressor that's also very characteristic, which is a FET compressor. So uh, FET meaning fat, and that is the 76 uh, compressor. Uh, f well, 1176. Or 10, 7, no, it's 11.76, and it's from, I forgot what the name was, but it doesn't matter. Again, not too many buttons, so it's a good thing. This is the fastest compressor on the market, okay? If, anyway, not the digital ones, but it's really, really fast, and it also adds warmth. And this one works the reverse way of you thinking it. So you normally would think one is the fastest EQ uh, attack setting, but actually, it's seven. So, boom, let's just put it way too much uh super fast and let's see what it does let's smack the living bananas out of it you can do that via the input level Ooh. this is where you use the ssl so the ratio you put it on the all so you put all the buttons on and then you get that thing to absolutely obliterate sound now a nice way to do this is to actually make a wet and dry knob because obviously that's too much right so what you can do is you can make a chain and you can this chain you'll say this is wet where everything smacked the sh you know bananas and you just duplicate it and just call this one dry and then you just delete this and then uh you can even like shape this with an eq to uh mix this in but let's just first let me just first make it a little bit more normal because right now it's just absolutely, you know, for a special school. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's just do that. Let's just let's just see what we can do. So I'm gonna slowly put in the wet channel. I don't think this will work, but it might work. Who cares, you know? Wait, I have an idea. Holy shit, this might be really cool. Oh, whoa. I never done this before, but it might actually be really cool. So let's take the flavor of the uh, 76, making it all like, yeah, I smack you in the face type of stuff. And then we'll control it with an SSL. Obviously, it's a little bit too much now. But now you have some aggressive drums, man. Nice. Oh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I like that. That's actually quite nice. So an SSL after a CLA-76. Even I learned something new every day. As long as you experiment, you're doing, uh, you're doing something. So, um... <laughs> So anyway, we have that drum bus. It's a flavorful drum bus because we have some, you know, Mozzi in there. We have the SSL, which is normally for me an extremely boring compressor, but it's gluing things together. And if you don't have these compressors, don't worry. Use a normal compressor and start playing with the attack and release times. And whatever you do, smack the living bananas out of it so you hear what it's doing. 
And if you want an analogy of what a compressor actually is, it's really simple. It's a guy with a volume knob. And the only thing that guy's job is, is to turn down the volume when it gets too hot and release it when it gets uh, normal again. And you can control how fast that person does it. And in a way, it becomes a transient designer. But as you can see, it can do much, much more than just that. So I'll probably talk about this topic quite a lot more because, um, yeah, I think it's needed. Anyway, see you guys in a bit. Peace out.